All right, listen. This whole box, this whole thing is everything I have to update you on. This is probably the biggest update of my channel. The minute you start a video, people just come out of the bushes, out of the corners, out of the shed, out of whatever hole and start making noise. Start rolling around suitcases, start yelling. I, there must be some way they know. All right, today is gonna be another makeup update and I have so much makeup here. I've been kind of postponing procrastinating this video because I know it's gonna be long. I know there's a lot to talk about, a lot to say, but I feel like before the end of the year, I wanna do one last big update to really tell you how I feel about all of these things that I've been trying the past few months. Let's start with some Nabla. I've been trying some Nabla these past few months. I've basically tried, from all the new releases, I've tried a few things. I've, I haven't tried all the products, but I try to like devil into the new releases. I think one of the things I like the most is the Nabla Viper Lip Mask. I haven't really talked about this. I haven't really shown this. I haven't really, said anything about this since the video that I just put this on my lips and was like, that feels nice. I really like this one. I like the packaging. It's really cool. I like what's inside. I like, it's a pretty big tub, but it is very hydrating. It is very like a nice feeling on the lips. It feels kind of thick. I love thick feeling lip products, moisturizing lip products, lip balms. I love applying this at night. I love applying this during the day. I usually will wait for this at night because it's a little thicker. You have to kind of give it the time to really sink in. And when you do that, it is very, very moisturizing. I really like it. One reason why I also really like it is because it doesn't have any scent. It just smells like jojoba oil or something like that that's in here. It just smells like the ingredients and it's a nice scent, but it's not overpowering for me. If I really like leather on, slather on a lip product, um, if it has a lot of perfume in it, it will make my mouth start feeling a little weird and this doesn't do that so i can just leather it on and i don't have to think about it i really like it it's a little bit more expensive but it does have a lot of product and a really nice packaging and yeah i think i would actually repurchase this this is a really really nice ball and then the side by side nude palette baby by nabla i recently put this in a neutral palette top 10 and i have to say i really really like it i have been reaching for it quite a bit because there are some really nice mattes in here that are just staples for neutral looks which i like to do i feel like this is a really really easy palette to grab for Maybe even easier than the big side by side nude because it's more like travel friendly. You can really easily keep it on your desk. It's really this kind of palette where you don't really have to think about it. It always works. All the shades work together. Really like the different formulas in here, the different like shimmer type shades. I really enjoy and I feel like the looks I do with this are really flattering and that is a thing that really made me kind of fall in love with this palette. Like, I like the first look that I did, but the more that I use it, the more that I like it, because the colors are just really flattering, uh, at least on me. I really like them on me. And just the way these blend, it's just really, really beautiful. Then we had some, like, we had the September collection, and I got a quad and I got a lipstick. The lipstick is the shade Eden, and it's in the limited edition light blue packaging. This is the formula that I already knew from Nabla. I do have to say I've gained a new sort of appreciation for this formula because I always felt like it was a little dry, like a little dry. Just for my dry lips, it felt a little dry. But I feel like this is a really good formula to use kind of like a liquid like a gloss or a liquid lip balm or something like that, a lip oil on top to combine with things. It really, really works well like that. Honestly, I was kind of expecting this shade to be a little more saturated. I feel like the shades in this line that I've tried are all pretty desaturated. It was really kind of like almost gray leaning muted for the type of tone that it is, but I do like this lipstick in a way like in a certain way I, I like it but not in every way then we have the quad and I've been going kind of like 
back and forth on this I just I didn't really feel it to be honest and in the end I have to say that I don't like the new formulation of the Nabla Cosmetics single eyeshadows more than what they used to have I like the old formulation more like these two light shades they just are not very impactful they don't do a lot maybe their neutral mattes are a little better but I didn't like these and then oh this shimmer I don't know what the name of it is but it's one of the celestial shades this shimmer i do like this multi-chrome i believe this was the citrus notes i felt like it was a nice shade but it didn't really blow me away and i feel like when you're asking like 17 18 euros for a shade i want to feel like it is out of this world beautiful i want to feel like it's worth it and i felt like this was just a little less like beautiful amazing than other multichromes that I've tried. Single multichromes, multichromes and palette. I, I just felt like it's a nice shade, but it's not like super special. I guess like the quality of this matte also didn't really help. This palette, like the little quad is really cute, but the quality of this as a whole didn't really impress me. Then we have something that did really impress me or it does really impress me. These are the Nabla Cupid's Arrow Shine. I did do a little tutorial with this. I did swatch them in a short. I really, really do like these. I am a big fan of the Cupid's Arrows as a whole, like the whole, oh wait, I have more shades of this. I have other matte shades as well from that September collection. I'm gonna see if I can dig them out, like there are too many products in this, but those are just other colors of the matte ones. These are actually new and I really, really like the shine ones. I feel like especially this shade, the lighter shade, which is called Crystalline. It's so beautiful. It's so multicolored, shimmery. It adds such a nice pop. But I also really like the other shades, the more shimmery ones and the more kind of satin ones to use as a little bit more of a softer eyeliner because I do like kind of like a smudgy eyeliner and I feel sometimes it helps to have a little bit of a shiny eyeliner. It just smudges out a little bit more or it looks a little softer. So I really like this, I would highly recommend them. I think it's great that they came out with something like this and I would like to see more shades in the shine line and especially with those like multicolored shimmers. It is stunning, it is beautiful, it is kind of like wet looking on the eyes and i really really liked it okay i found them i found the two matte shades i have shade cappuccino and i have shade mauve both of these are really nice i really love these shades these are beautiful i haven't really reached for them like in the past few weeks because they were on the bottom of this um of this basket but i'm gonna like keep them close because these are really nice all right the palette that i just recently tried but i have been doing different looks and i do want to say something about it before the end of the year because i feel like they are kind of like restocking it now and it is um and it's just relevant now and i did do a few different looks i feel like i could have spend a little bit more time on this palette but i do have things to say about it and it is a case for maybe a few products here but i just want to like let you know in the meantime if i change my mind i will let you know but after doing like four looks with this which i think is a pretty decent number i've tried all the shades i have to say i really really like this palette especially the shimmers are just really really nice i think they did a lot of beautiful different textures in here. I really like the holographic shade that is in here. I do have to say, if you don't like any mess with your makeup, don't buy holographic shades because they're just a little bit more chunky and sticky and they are gonna get all over your existence. So I don't really fault them for that. I really do like the shade, but I can imagine that some people might not like the kind of like a uh, removing situation. It will get all over your face, but with beautiful multichromes, beautiful shimmers. I really love the tones in here. I feel like it's very flattering. It is just a very interesting neutral palette. I really like the tones of the mattes. The mattes in formula are not my absolute favorite, but they are definitely workable. The tones work really well with the shimmers. I just feel like they are okay, but because of the shimmers that are so good, it still lifts this palette to a certain level where I really, really like it. 
I think it's great. I think it's beautiful. I think I'm gonna have a lot more fun with this. It is a really, really nice palette. All right, the Lunar Beauty collection, the Lunar Beauty Siren Sunset collection. I really like this palette. The quality in this is amazing multi-chromes with beautiful shimmers there's just a lot going on in here that is really interesting the shimmers i think i love the most are pink pearl and water nymph they are just such shiny kind of like iridescent bright pink and green shades really love those i've done a lot of fun looks with this i really like the colorful mattes in here really love the soft looks that you can do with it as well this is a palette that really excites me i just have one little like note and i feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect with the kind of like cool tone neutral palette that is in here and the very bright shades. I feel like there could be something kind of like in between or something to more so blend the darker mattes, like the darker color for mattes into. I feel like we kind of have two different palettes here in a way and I feel like one or two shades that are a little bit in between colorful and neutral could have kind of bridged the gap. I feel like if I go into this palette, I either go like super colorful, bright and very like multi-chrome shimmery, or I go very soft, very cool tone neutral. And I feel like it's just, it's just a small thing. It's just a little thing, but it's something that I did notice that made it a little bit more difficult than I was expecting to do looks with this palette, but it is a really, really beautiful palette with great quality. I also tried the two liquid lipsticks in this collection. I have shade Pink Pearl or two. There were three. I didn't buy the purple one. This is Pink Pearl and this is Sailor. Beautiful shades, a little grungy, a little out there, a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I do really like just how kind of mysterious these look. These are really nice shades. I already knew that I liked the formula from Luna Bean. I will be so happy after I've put all of this makeup in my collection. I will feel free. I'm happy I'm doing this in the end. Okay, then we have the Lunar Beauty Lunar Versal Setting Powder in Pink. This is a really beautiful setting powder. I have to say I'm not an expert. I have not tried a crazy amount of setting powders. I haven't gone through setting powders. I am very, I use them very sparingly, but if I have kind of like a little bit of texture here or here, or just a little bit of shine, usually I don't really mind it, but sometimes when you take pictures, if you have a little bit of texture here, it can be a little distracting. For that case, I will be grabbing this powder and it will just immediately solve my problem. I really like the poof that is in here. I use it all the time. I think it's very convenient that it's in the packaging like this. I think the shade isn't too pink. I feel like it fits really well with my skin and my skin doesn't feel like it's too silky. Like it still feels like skin, but it just looks a little bit more like matte and refined and you just see the texture less. I'm really happy that I have this. I feel like it's super convenient. I think I'm just gonna leave this on my desk because I just always reach for this one. It's a really good one. And then we have the Catrice Christmas collection. This was called Magic Christmas Story. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with the quality in this. The mattes are really pigmented. The shimmers are really shiny. They are really creamy. I don't feel like the shimmers are super textured. Like some of them have a little have a little bit more of a, like a multicolor shimmer shimmer in there, but there's just something super creamy and kind of pigmented about this whole palette, and I feel like it really packs a punch, especially for Catrice, and that is also why I get a bit more excited about something like this because I don't really expect almost for them to have super good quality eyeshadows, but they did do something great with this palette. If you love the shades in this, I would highly recommend it because it is very affordable. I do have to say, it is not a very easy palette to come up with a look. I feel like three mattes makes it a little hard, especially with the mattes not being able to blend into each other. Like, okay, the, the two more neutral shades, they could blend into each other. Okay, okay, okay. But I feel like you don't have a lot of options in the mattes here, which makes it just a little difficult to do looks. And because of that, I don't feel super inspired to go back into this. I don't feel like, oh, I want to do that look. I want to do that look. I, it's kind of like too colorful for me to be okay with it being very limiting. Because if something is very neutral and limiting, I will be like, oh, that's an easy go-to look. But this isn't go-to. 
and it isn't like easy it's a, it's a bit of a difficult palette the quality is great the packaging is really cute it's just a little confusing this color story sometimes for me then we have the lipsticks in this collection i got two of the shades this is dancing snowflakes really i like the color and the finish of this very like satiny slightly glowy um that one is kind of like a cool tone nude and then we have potted which is more of a berry shade i think they for the kind of lipstick formula that they are they last pretty long the packaging is a little cheapy but it does look cute they have a pretty overpowering scent to them so if you don't like that stay away from these i would say i think these are pretty cute lipsticks they are pretty good quality they stay on pretty long they look nice on the lips they are nice shades they are not gonna be my ultimate ultimate favorite because i don't really like the packaging and the scent is just a little bit too much for me but all in all especially for the price i think these are very nice if you really like the shades or the packaging i would say go for it and then we have the two squeezy tubes uh the two cheek lighters we have shade mother ginger and sugar plum fairy i feel like these blend out really easily i think they're really cute shades i really like the glow that these give it's not really like super metallic -y or super like blinding out there it's pretty natural but i quite like these i feel like this whole collection is a bit like this for the price it's really good kind of collection and that makes me excited that we have these from Catrice and I did really like these when I wore them I did really like how these looked on the skin I just I don't know if these would beat like my absolute favorite squeezy tube um, poof kind of products these are not gonna like go to the top of my highlighters but i would say they are pretty good for like what you pay for i think i'm starting to see the bottom like something is happening we're getting through some products let's talk about the christmas collection by kika milano the holiday premiere collection okay i think i have everything from this collection i already talked about this a bit in a in a ranking Kiki Milano limited editions and yeah in different videos actually so first up we have the lip oil from the collection I have the glossy lip oil in 02 it's a little sticky it's a little almost thick feeling on the lips I kind of like it it's pretty hydrating it doesn't have a lot of um, color to it it's just very subtle the scent on it is kind of like vanilla the packaging is quite nice I quite like this i just think they could have given a bit more product for the price like it's 13 euros you give three milliliters of product usually their lip glosses are like six and a half milliliters it feels a little bit like too easy and too easy way to make money uh, it doesn't feel fair so i think there are better lip oils out there that are a much better value than this one then these lip products i really really like these are the holiday premiere lipstick and gloss the duos i bought one first i bought this one first this is the one in doesn't it say it's zero two and i really really like that one so i also bought zero one and the nude shade and i bought zero three the mauve shade these have a beautiful lipstick a kind of like matte lipstick but it's pretty hydrating it is a pretty nice shade i really like the lipstick on this and then we have the gloss and together it just looks very flattering i just really like the combination of the two it's just flattering it stays on a pretty long time it just looks really good it's very like nice shades that come together very conveniently you can get this kind of look with the common products that they have in a regular line but i do really like just the way they did these it's it's a good quality lipstick it is kind of like matte but not too flat or too tuggy or too drying it's just a nice lipstick on its own but then with a little bit of the gloss on top it just looks very like dimensional and i really like that then we have the pearly duo face highlighter in 01 spotlight this one is a nice highlighter it's not my ultimate favorite it is nice but it's kind of like basic basic not like this absolutely amazing beautiful melts into your skin it looks like glass skin kind of highlighter it's just a pretty standard kind of powder highlighter 
it is nice quality but it's not kind of like blowing my mind i feel like kicking lana does better highlighters than this one even though i don't think this is bad at all it's just for kicking lana standards i would go for something else then we have the enchanting duo bronzer in warm honey 02 really like this bronzer it smells pretty like strong the scent is strong i would prefer it to be a little less like perfumey but the bronzer itself is a really nice shade, kind of like this neutral shade. It is very skin-like, it blends out easily. It's just what we're used to from Kika Milano. It's a really nice bronzer. I really like this one. It's just good quality and what I would expect. Nothing crazy there. Then we have the Made to Shine eyeshadow palette in 01 Color Symphony. I actually put this in the worst of the year and not because it's the worst eyeshadow palette that I've ever tried or it's so so bad but it was just very disappointing to me because the two top shades are just very flat and kind of matte looking and they just dull down the whole look if i apply those and i just felt like this was presented as being kind of like this sparkly extra glam extra layer of sparkle on the lids kind of eyeshadow palette and it didn't do that for me it kind of made my eye looks dull i feel like the bottom shades are fine but it's also probably because they are lighter shades they do light up your look a little bit but the top two they just made this palette very disappointing i just wanted it to be like the enchanting what was it called? Enchanted Holiday something. I, I can't remember the name of the collection from two years ago. I was hoping that it was going to be like the shimmers from that collection because those were amazing. But this was just very lackluster. And for kind of like this quad of four sparkles, I was just expecting more. And then we have the last powder product, the Charming Duo Blush in 02 Mop Appearance. I already ranked this for my yearly blush ranking that will be already up. It was pretty high up. It's a really nice shade. It's a really nice formula. I like the packaging. It is just not something that I will be reaching for, I think, all the time because it is a bit brighter, even though I didn't have any problem blending this. It's just a little bit outside of my comfort zone in a way that I might stay away a little bit from it, but there's nothing wrong with this. It's nice. It, it blends easily. It looks skin-like. It is beautiful. It's a, it's a nice blush. Then we have an unexpected favorite from this collection and that is the Kika Milano Holiday Premier L'Etoile Golden Eau de Parfum. And this is just very spicy but also very warm and it just smells a little bit like gingerbread-esque spices but not too literal. Like very sensual kind of sophisticated gingerbread and I love it and I've been wearing this a lot. You can't really see it but it's around here. I don't know where it was at the start, but I've been wearing this a lot. This is a great like fall winter scent when you want to feel like the warmth of Christmas. You want to smell like the warmth of Christmas. For that, this is a really nice one. This is one of my favorite perfumes of the year. Like when I first sprayed it on, I was a little confused. I was a bit like, mm, might not be for me but then when it dried down i actually really really started liking it and now it is a fave all right let's move on to some glaminatrix i've been trying a lot of glaminatrix a lot has been going on with me and glaminatrix um i don't know how we got here but i did make two orders in a pretty short time usually i don't do that a lot because it is a bit more expensive it takes a little longer sometimes i'm a bit late with the videos because of that but I'm just so excited about this brand, so I keep buying. So here we have the Glaminatrix Fairy Light Palette. I used this recently in a video, did the first impression. This is just such an easy palette to just kind of keep on your desk. And then when you are doing a look and you want to add a little bit of light, a little bit of sparkle, you just grab one and just tap it over and it looks really, really beautiful. Maybe I can... I'm gonna dip into the shade carols usually i'm not a spontaneous makeup -er in videos but can you see how it brings some sparkle and light to this look not that there was anything wrong with this look at all but i just really love how it is so easy to kind of top something with this type of shimmer palette and it has different tones so it will like you will always have a shimmer that will fit 
a look and these are also really nice for inner corner highlights it's just a very versatile palette that just elevates the look a little bit and i really really like that these are just very sparkly very shiny very metallic beautiful shades very easy to use there's a holographic shade in here as well cracker same story as with the holographic in the Blast God's eyeshadow palette, it is just a little bit chunky. It's gonna get everywhere. It's gonna be all over your existence, but it's worth it because it's really pretty. Like two really nice holographic shimmers came into my life at the same time, which I really like this. Highly recommend it. It's restocking in January. Then another thing, it's a pretty similar formula, honestly. The glimmering creatures from Glaminatrix are just such beautiful eyeshadows like these are in singles i feel like if you're really an eyeshadow palette kind of person go for the fairy lights if you want to pick like specific shades go for the glimmering creatures same story with these i've just had them here on my desk and just sometimes you just feel the need you feel the need the urge to add some sparkle and i've been doing that with these palettes like sometimes you have eyeshadow palettes that are a little bit more subdued have a little bit less shine they are still beautiful but they are just not at that level that you want with the shine and then you just pop something on or pop something in the inner corner or on the lower lash line and it's so beautiful i've been enjoying these a lot then last thing the glaminatrix cosmetics a rich romantic this I've been using a lot and I really, really like it. The quality in this is amazing. The shimmers are stunning. The mattes in here really love the shades of these, especially intoxicating. This one, so good for the inner corner. I love it. It is so pigmented. It's so nice. I've been having a lot of fun with this palette. I really love the combination, kind of like red, peach, pink, and then greens like this row of murky greens i think is a really nice addition and because these shimmers have kind of like shifts from purple to pink to green to gold i feel like they fit with all of the mattes so i've been really enjoying this i really really love the shimmers in here it's just a lot of shifty shades i really like the packaging it is just a beautiful color story really up my alley because i just love this kind of like is it neutral? It's not really neutral, but it's also not really super colorful. Kind of like in between kind of color story. I loved it. All right, let's talk about some more expensive makeup and the Charlotte Tilbury Beautyverse palette. I did a pretty positive first impression on this and I would say that the quality in this isn't bad. Like we have some sparkly shades, we have some pretty nice mattes. I don't really like the peachy pink matte. I didn't really get that to show up. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's the eyeshadow, maybe it's a combination of the two, but I didn't really like that one. I do like the mattes on the top. They are very creamy and they are very flattering because of that slight sheen that they have because of the creaminess. I think this is a pretty cute palette. There's nothing like really wrong with it, but because it's so expensive, I do feel like I would spend my money elsewhere. Just having it in my collection a little bit, Feeling like I have to use it more. Feeling like I have to try it out more so I can review it. It's feeling kind of like a chore to review this. Has made me realize it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's pretty nice. But it is just not at the level that I would want to see. Like if this shimmer formula would be like Laminatrix. Then I would be like it's worth the price. But then you could also just buy Laminatrix. I just like it need more in the end. I do get it. I do get why people didn't super, super love the eyeshadow palette, even though it's not bad in my eyes. And then we have the Hollywood Blush and Glow Glide Palette with the highlighter and the blush. This is pretty nice. It's just not blowing my mind. It is just not tickling my fancy. It's just not making me feel like I have to get back into this palette. It felt a little bit like a chore as well. And then you know that it's not truly like a very, very good, like favorite product. Like the products in here, they're creamy. They look nice on the skin. There's really nothing wrong with it, but it also doesn't get me super excited. I also feel like the shade of pink is just a little uninspired. Feels a little basic. I don't know. This collection, I'm not mad that I have it. I'm not mad that I bought it. But it is not the thing from all the holiday launches. All the things that I've tried that really, really get me super hyped. 
So yeah, I gotta be honest about it, especially because it's pretty expensive. All right, let's talk about the Dragon Eye eyeshadow palette from What's Up Beauty. I got this in PR, so that already honestly made me extra excited for this palette. But I took my time to really do different looks and really make up my mind and just decide for myself what I think of it. I have to say these shimmers are really, 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 really beautiful, especially scales is out of this world beautiful. It is so shifty, but like fly and fierce, I think. <sighs> Can I pick favorites? I also really like the purple shimmers. This just has stunning, stunning, stunning shimmers. Beautiful. The mattes, I like. They are not my absolute favorites because I feel like with this beautiful, stunning, super creamy, impactful shimmer formula, I feel like the mattes just are a little too soft. I feel like they could have a little bit more of a punch to them, a little bit more buildability to match the quality of those shimmers. I do understand why people like these types of mattes because they are very easy to work with, they're very easy to blend. I just feel like if I look really closely to my eye looks, there's just a little bit of a disbalance where I just really see how punchy the shimmer is and then the matte kind of like disappears to the background almost but it's very nitpicky because I do love this palette as a whole I think it's a great palette it is a favorite of the year it is just stunning I feel like the looks I've done with this are beautiful it's just this small thing that I did want to mention it is a matte formula that is just a little bit more like silky and soft. By the way, the packaging also beautiful. I really like this. It's kind of like this bridge between colorful and more neutral. I would have loved to see a green matte in here as well, but this just being nitpicky, really love it. And then something that I wasn't sure I was gonna buy, but in the end I did buy, and then it became like a really good decision. So I tried the Swan Belay collection from Flower Nose. This is the Pink Swan eyeshadow palette and this palette is just stunning. You can go a little bit more smoky, you can go a little bit more pink. I have to say maybe these two pinks didn't have to be in here, like these two mattes are a little similar on the eye. But I really love the looks that I did with this. These two shimmers are so beautiful, wet looking, shiny, metallic. They are some of my favorite shimmers of the year. They are stunning and I just really love this color story. This is such a good quality palette. Love the mattes, love the shimmers. They did a great job with that. And then something else that was also in this collection that really surprised me in such a positive way. These are chunky. These are chunky lipsticks, but these are the, it doesn't, it doesn't say the name of the actual product, but this is shade Silver Moon, but these are the sheer shiny lipsticks from this collection. These are beautiful. They are shiny, they are sheer, but they are also kind of long lasting. Like they don't disappear from your lips. They kind of like stuck. They're stuck on your lips. They are kind of... I don't know what they did with this formula, but they're pretty long wearing. We have shade Mary Jane as well. Like both of these are really nice shades. I think they did a great job with this formula. This is, I think these are maybe my favorite formula when it comes to sheer shiny lipsticks because they stay on such a long time. You don't really have to think about them. Like at the end, they're gonna wear off a little bit, but like in a very flattering way. Really, really love these. They're very comfortable, but that's just, I don't know, a slight, slight stick to them. Like you can feel them gripping onto your lips and then they're gonna look good for a few hours longer than regular sheer shiny lipsticks. Man, we still have some things to talk about. Uh, let's move on to some affordable makeup. Let's talk about some She Glam. So I tried some She Glam in like a full face of She Glam. This is the Quad in Spellbound, the Cosmic Crystal Eyeshadow Quad. I feel like this is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice eyeshadow formula. It, it works quite well, especially for the price. It didn't really blow me away just looking at this without looking at the price. Like it's good for the price. It's a nice quad. If you just want something simple, you don't want crazy formulas, you don't want crazy shine, you don't want multi-chromes, you don't want anything too 
out there this is a good formula it's good then we have something that i put in the worst did i put it in the worst? i think i put this in the worst of the year this is the snatch and blush stick in wild love the reason i did is because it didn't show up on me at all i couldn't get this to show up on my skin and i am pretty fair and this is a few shades darker than my skin, but I couldn't get it to show up. I feel like maybe a different shade would work. I feel like it is pretty creamy. Maybe another one would show up on me. I don't feel like the whole range is gonna be unusable for me, but this one, maybe if you're like super fair, that could work for you, but it didn't work for me. Then we have something that I did like. This is the Snatch and Define Stick in Soft Tan. This is a pretty nice shade. It blended out really nicely. It's just very effortless. Just a, a nice, good stick bronzer. Nothing negative to say about this. It is a, quite a light shade. Once I got a little less tan, like when I first tried it, I was more tan. And now I'm a little less tan. It did show up better on me. Like in the video, I was a bit like, well, like where is the bronzer? I quite like this. Then we have another bronzer. This is the Sunside Bronzer in Morning Beam. This is a powder bronzer. This is also very light, but at this point it does show up on me. Uh, it is a bit hard to say though, because I feel like, of course, this will blend better into my skin because it's so close to my skin tone. But I feel like it's a pretty nice formula. It's very skin-like. It does blend out easily. It does show up. Like it, There's some buildability to it. Uh, I quite like it. Like those bronzers, pretty nice. My favorite from the bronzers that I've tried from She Glam is this a Golden Sun Sun Skill. Is this Golden Sun Sun Sculpt Liquid Contour, and this is in shade Golden Sun. Oh, I already said the shade. This is the typical liquid blush liquid bronzer packaging from She Glam. You just put it on, like dot it on like that. I really like the shade, really love the formula. It's very skin-like, it's very creamy, very blendable. I really love this actually. This is a great one. I am just, I don't know why I'm so careful with saying that, but I've been using this quite a bit. I've been going back to this. I feel like it's super easy and it just looks great. I really like the tone and just the way it looks on the skin. This is my favorite from the She Glam products that I tried, I think. And then we have the Color Bloom Day Glow. I cannot speak anymore. The Color Bloom Day Glow. <laughs> the Color Bloom Day Glow Liquid Blush in Devoted. This is quite a nice liquid blush. It blends out easily. It looks quite okay. Like quite nice on the cheeks. It is just not fully my shade. It pulls just a little warmer on me and a little... Uh, I think a little uneven on me because of the shade. It just doesn't really mesh perfectly with my skin. I don't feel like there's really something wrong with it, but it also didn't blow me away. It is pretty nice. I just don't feel like this was obviously a new favorite. I did buy a few different shades, like other shades, to see if it is the shade or what is going on. Can I still come to love this formula? It might be the case but this shade every time i wore it i just didn't feel like it was anything special then we have the pinky promise cosmic crystal mousse highlighter this one is pretty nice i do have to say when i did the first impression it looked very very wet i have not been able to kind of replicate that look now it just looks very skin like it's just this skin like kind of super shock kind of effect on the cheeks, I really like this. This is my favorite highlighter that I've tried so far from She Glam. This highlighter, the Moonside highlighter in Moon Rose, I feel is very kind of powdery and a little bit too soft. It's very natural. It doesn't do like exactly what I would want. It's just a little powdery. It's just not as like effortless, glazy melting into the skin kind of highlighter that I'm looking for. It's just a little powdery, it's just a little soft, it's just not that glow exactly that I'm looking for. I feel like people might still like this. I don't think it's a bad product, but I also don't think that it is amazing and that it's gonna be like a favorite or something that I go back to. I don't think so. Then we have the Glam 101 Hybrid Highlighter and Blush Duo. This is in Seville. I didn't think this was 
amazing i mean i also think the shades don't work perfectly for me i don't think there's anything wrong with this but it's just not something that inspires me it's just not something i want to reach for i feel like the shades are just a little off and when i wore it i just didn't also didn't feel like the formula was blowing me away in such a way that i would want to have it in more shades it is just okay i've tried so many makeup products this year and the past few months that if there's nothing really wrong with it but also not something that makes me go like oh like it's gonna fall in that mm, meh okay in between category then we have the she glam glaze days lip gloss this was shade rose tea this is really nice it's very glazy it's very comfortable it's kind of hydrating it smells makeup-y, not amazing, but it's a really nice lip product. I really like the shade and the finish and just the feel on the lips. It's just, it's nice. There's one more thing. Was there? I bumped into my camera. I hope this is kind of where we're at. We have some Moira to discuss. Oh wait, I have one more sheet lamp. Okay. This is my favorite thing, I think, from Chic Glam. Together with the liquid bronzer. This is the Ready Set eyeshadow primer. And this is actually an eyeshadow primer that keeps my eyeshadow on. It is absolutely mind-blowing. So, I have been talking about... Where did I put it? The eyeshadow primer by Atos for years and years and years. I've been using it for years and years and years because this is the only thing that I have found these past years that has kept my eyeshadow on. I have very oily eyelids. That is my only issue. Is it my only issue? I don't think so. I have 99 problems and my eyelid, like they're definitely like 50% of that. But yeah, I've tried so many different eyeshadow primers and none of them worked. And I was like, I want to be able to, to tell you about an eyeshadow primer that isn't like specifically in a Dutch drugstore that you cannot really order online. Like who goes to the Netherlands? Like maybe, like a few people maybe, but it was just too specific. So I was looking for something and this is just basically the same formula it feels like the same kind of thing it is like this seems to have some color to it but basically it is see-through and then when you apply it it is liquidy but it kind of becomes very dry and sticky and i like that this works i do feel like if i have a really 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 long day i might still reach for the atos eyeshadow primer just because i'm 100 percent sure like We've been through some tough times and we've made it. This one I'm still a little scared, but I have done tests where this did keep my eyeshadow on for like the full day. So usually it does work. And maybe at the very, very end of a very long day, there might be a little bit of creasing forming, but that could also happen with Athos. Like I am very... Like keeping a close eye on this one but it has been working i think it is time to admit that this is an eyeshadow primer that i can actually use with my oily eyelids and it's affordable so that's nice i've been using this most days actually like this one i just opened it i used it today and yeah i'm just gonna be like using them both interchangeably you really don't want to see my desk right now i just realized that one of the moira products i actually put in my bag i don't know where it is right now but i actually really like it i'm just gonna put a picture on the screen it is the kind of like sheer shiny but not super sheer liquid not liquid <laughs> lipstick from moira i had it in like a little bit of a brown nude shade i feel like it's really good wearing it's really flattering it looks really nice i really like that lip product it's just kind of like everything you want in a lip product it stays a long time it looks really nice and flattering it feels nice it's affordable i like it i like that one then we have this sculpt and glow duo stick this is an okay product to me i feel like the way they make this stick like the edges are pointing upwards it's just a bit odd to apply the bronzer in this is a bit too warm for me even though it does blend out quite nicely the highlighter is quite all right like it's glowy it's a creamy glowy highlighter i feel like i do have 
liquid and cream highlighters that I like more than this one. This is a pretty okay product. I feel like if I would get into it even more, like if the bronzer was better, I could get into it even more. But the bronzer is just not the right shade for me. This is just a little bit of a okay product to me but i feel like some people could like it a lot more than i've liked it then we have the blush this is the love heat cream blush in 09 i have you this is a pretty nice cream blush i quite like the shade it blends out easily it doesn't look weird it just it dries down it's pretty like standard in a way this cream blush but i think it's quite nice Quite nice. Then we have the Glow Getter Hydrating Lip Oil. This is in 12 Only Smooches. This is very pigmented, but if you apply it a little bit more sparingly, it can look a little bit more natural. I think this is quite a nice one. It is just one where you have to not apply it blindly, maybe. But did this have a scent? It smells makeup-y. I quite like the shade. I quite like the feel of this on the lips. It's not my new absolute favorite liquid lip balm, lip oil kind of product because it doesn't feel as effortless and as kind of oily as some other products. It just feels a little bit more like a thicker, glossy kind of product. I feel like it's a pretty good one. Then we have the Lip Appeal Waterproof Liner. I don't know if it's the formula or the shade, but I feel like this is just... I feel like it's just not giving me enough. Like, I want a little bit more. Like, maybe if it were a little bit darker, maybe it were a little bit more pigmented. It just doesn't give me the structure that I want. So, I'm not sure if I will try another shade. I feel like it is a pretty good formula. Like, it's not too creamy and it's not too tuggy. But it is just not exactly what i'm looking for i don't know exactly what it is like yeah i feel like it's a pigmentation the pigmentation is just lacking a little bit and because of that it's not my favorite something that is actually a favorite is the moira dreamlight highlighter in 05 love struck it is just this very i don't know how would you call this it is kind of shimmery but not really it's kind of like this veil of teeny 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 tiny shimmers that makes it look so wet looking on the skin it looks beautiful i love the shade of this as well it's kind of like this peachy pinky beautiful shade it looks very flattering on the skin it is not kind of like metallic it just blends in i just really really like this the finish and the color just it works well together and it just looks so beautiful and kind of different on the skin it's very noticeable but in a good way it makes your skin just look very good i hope i kind of explained it well i mean i've been filming for an hour and i'm kind of starting to feel like i need to get through this last part it is a beautiful highlighter okay just trust me it's just beautiful it looks amazing on the skin it is just, it's not like this lit from within thing, but it's also not this metallic thing. It's kind of like in between. It is nice. Then we have the Moira Endless Moonlight Celestial Series Palette. I really like this one. It is just kind of standard in a way that takes me back to my youth. And because of that, I really like it. It is just the mattes are very beautiful, blendable, flattering shades. I really like the selection of those. The shimmers are different textures. Some are a little bit more shimmery. Some are a little bit more soft and satin. They all are nicely pigmented. I feel like the looks with this are very basic, but very flattering. That's how I would describe this palette. It is exciting in how basic this is. And how much this speaks to my basic cool tone neutral soul. I like it. It is just, it speaks to something very specific. I like the quality. I like the textures. I like the blend. I like all the looks that I did with it. But this is the kind of palette where I would grab a Glimmering Creatures single and just pop that on top and then be super happy. All right, a few more things to talk about. We have the Laguna 01 bronzer by nars this one is my new favorite shade like at least for now at least for the winter i also have zero two or oh two this is a great shade it is really neutral it just has this right undertone that i really love it's really easy to blend i've been grabbing for this one a bunch this is such a good one i really like the formula of this and it just it blends out beautifully it's so flattering it is such a beautiful creamy bronzer very skin like it dries down just 
amazing. And then we have another random one. I bought a H&M lip shine. This is a pretty nice gloss. It is shimmery. It is in the shade Tiny Spark. Okay, it's in the shade Tiny Spark. There's nothing wrong with this, but there's also not something about this where I'm like, run out, run out the door, run to your closest H&M and grab this lip gloss. It's not. It's, it's nice. It's nice. I want to say don't get it because it's quite a nice formula. I don't know. Maybe I should just be... I don't know. Let's, let's do this. Usually don't do this, but today's the day. I'm slowly going crazy. Like, it's nice. It's not, it's not too sticky. It feels quite good. The shimmers are quite nice. I just... I don't know. Quite good. Can't say much else about it. Let's see. We have some Kiko here. Okay. This is the Kiko Crazy 90s Giving More Volumizing Gloss in 03. It's kind of like this berry red. It's a really nice gloss. It is slightly shimmery. It is sheer. It looks really good. It is just effortless. This is a great gloss. I don't... I just, I think this one does a little bit more with the color. This is just a hint of shimmer and this is just giving me 3D. It's giving me volume. It's giving me a lot. And I really love this for kind of like soft makeup looks. Like don't do a lot, but then add a little bit of that soft berry red. It is really nice. Then we have the Sculpting Touch Creamy Stick Contour. I mean, I'm not going to talk about the formula here because you know, maybe you know, that this is my favorite cream bronzer stick situation, basically. It's so good. I had the shade 200, now I have the shade 203 as well. This is shade coffee. This is such a beautiful color. It looks very bronzy without looking orange. I don't know how they do it, but this shade, it is not like this gray cool tone, but it is just this undertone that makes me look like I've actually been in the sun. Like I have neutral to cool undertones and this makes me look like I do when I've actually been in the sun. So it's kind of like the tan of someone with neutral to cool skin, which I love. This is a great shade. I would highly recommend it if you have similar a similar skin tone to mine. Then we have this finishing powder, the Radiant Fusion Baked Powder in 01. Honestly, I haven't really figured it out yet. I want to, and I have used it a couple of times. But it just feels like it just it just does a tiny bit. It does a tiny bit. And I have to accept that it only does a tiny bit. It's for the tiny bit that it does, it is good. It works good. It looks nice. I just don't feel like this type of product maybe is the thing that I'm gonna be adding to my makeup routine. Do I wanna add another step? That is the thing. Do I wanna add another tiny step for a tiny bit? Of difference I don't know about that but I think for people who like finishing powders that this is a nice one probably I'm not an expert in this case I've not tried a lot of finishing powders but this is the first one so not a lot of things to compare it to I'm not the right person to review it maybe not <laughs> then I have this Kika Milano joyful holiday liquid highlighter this is in 01 Easy to blend, easy to use, it's very natural. It's not a beaming highlight, it's not a metallic highlight, it's not gonna look very noticeable on the skin, but it's a nice one for if you like something a little bit more natural and kind of like a rosy champagne. Then we have the Essence Hydro Kiss Lip Oil. There has been some talk about this one that if you take out the um, wand that nothing is left and we're all getting scammed. Um, I feel like that's nonsense but um this is a pretty nice lip oil it feels quite nice it just it feels a little cheapy it feels a little makeup -y. maybe it's a scent it just smells very like cheap makeup i feel like if they would have done a little bit more with that it wouldn't feel so much when applying like cheap makeup like the formula of this is quite nice but it just doesn't give me the feeling that i want from a hydrating lip oil like it is just a little too cheapy for me to be really really excited about it. It is affordable. It does have 4 milliliters of product which is not a crazy amount. Like if you don't have a lot of budget then I would say go for it. It's pretty nice but it's not like by far not the best lip oil that I've tried. Then I actually tried this Jo Malone scent in ginger biscuit 
and I've really enjoyed it. It does smell a lot like ginger biscuit, but like sophisticated ginger biscuit, and it's just a perfect scent for this time of year. I just find myself spraying this on when I go do something festive and it just gets me into the festive spirit. Do be aware that this is very gingerbread-esque. When you smell this, you will think of gingerbread. It's not exact, but it's very, very close. I do really like it. It does last quite a long time on me. I did see a review where someone was like, it doesn't last that long on me. It does last quite long on me. Then we have... Okay, we're almost at the end. I've been filming for so long. This is the NARS uh, Afterglow Lip Balm in Fastlane. This is beautiful. This is stunning. It is expensive, but it looks so good on the lips. It's so flattering and it feels so nice. I can see myself using this up because it's so effortless. It looks so good. I feel like a little bit of a lip line. It is very interesting. It is so sheer, but then when you add a little bit of a lip liner and put this on top, it all just blends together and melts together and looks so good. And it just starts looking like it is actually pigmented. There's some magic in this. I don't know. I really like it. Then we have the Nimia blushes. I bought three of the Nimia blushes, all, all three of them. And I really like these. So by now you can go to my blush ranking. You can see all my thoughts. I talk about them in depth there. But they all have these kind of blocks. They come with a little sponge that you apply it with. The little light blue sponge. And they come in a little container like this. They are very compact. But you do have quite a lot of product in here. They had like twice the product of the Moira Cream Blush. And these are like 13 euros, 14 euros each. Which I think is a really good price. And there's also a bundle deal. But this is Pink Ranger. And this is what it looks like. These are very pigmented. But at the same time very blendable. It feels like they are buildable. But in the other direction. Like you apply them and they look scary. But then you take a few minutes blending and they just melt into the skin it is very interesting i really really like these blushes i really like all the shades that nikki came out with i feel like they are really out there like they are oh, my voice like they are so bright but i still feel like they go with a lot of looks and i really understand the shades that she chose like this is hey carl and this is kind of like a it's a warm coral looking like in the pan, like it looks really bright. But then when you apply it and you blend it out, it looks more like a rosy tone. So we have a pink tone, a cool tone, a rosy tone. And then we also have a very warm tone like this. Picture Perfect Peach, it has a very yellow on the tone, but I still feel like these warm shades suit me very well, even though I have a neutral to cool on the tone. And there's something in this that makes them really like, blendable and they just melt into the skin so this is very yellow in undertone so i feel like for different looks we have different blushes i would love to see different shades of this i would love to see a nude even though i feel like these work with a lot and they really get me excited and it really get me outside of my comfort zone because of the bright shades I would love to see more. Yeah, they're very skin-like. They're long-lasting. They do dry down. They're not sticky or anything. I really like these. They are they are really good blushes. I'm excited about these. All right. I don't even want to know how many products I talked about. I've been talking for one, like an hour and 15 minutes. Um, yeah, this is my biggest update to date. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe. And then I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.